Yo, what's up, family? It's B, Brian Evans Unleashed here, back for another episode of Be Unleashed. This is day 24 of our 30-day inspiration challenge, and as always, I'm so grateful to you guys for rocking with me. For those of you who have subscribed to my channel, thank you so very much. Um, for those of you who have not, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Click the bell for uh, all new notifications of all new content uh, when I'm dropping those. All right, so today I wanna to talk about truth and its effect on us as individuals, um, what it really means and um, how we should interact with truth. It's very, very important to realize that perception is not truth and it's very difficult sometimes because we as humans have blind spots, what I call psychological blind spots. Um, basically the biases that we all carry. And what makes these biases and blind spots so dangerous is quite naturally because we can't see them. If we do not have the right people around us in our circle, who can bring these blind spots into focus or into view for us, um, then many times we will not even be conscious of the fact that we're operating or living life out of these blind spots. And we're doing things subconsciously because of the programming of our minds underneath the current of consciousness that we have on a daily basis runs on autopilot. So your experiences are filed away in the vault of your subconscious. Um, trauma is filed away uh, many times in the vault of your subconscious and this program is running in the background of our thinking and it causes us to act out in certain ways that we may not understand and in ways that we may not be conscious of or um, in ways that are not necessarily visible to us because it's us. <laughs> so many times people have to bring these things to our attention. And if you have the right people in your life that you trust, who you give access to, that can help you by shedding truth, shedding light on truth, um, then it makes growth uh, possible and in many cases accelerates growth. So today I want to kind of talk about truth and seeing truth or knowing truth. So the Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32, Jesus is speaking and he tells um, his audience that when we understand or know truth, truth makes us free. Truth liberates us. So according to the Vines Expository Dictionary, uh, the definition of truth is the reality that lies at the basis of an appearance. The reality that lies at the basis of an appearance. Basically, truth is not what something appears to be but it is the actual reality of that appearance. So appearance is basically what or how an individual sees a thing, okay? But the reality of that thing can be something totally different beyond what it appears to be. And I know you're familiar with the saying, things are not always as they appear. Basically, what that saying is trying to convey is what an individual sees or what appears to an individual, okay, can pretty much be interpreted by the individual as something totally different from what actually is concerning that thing. So think about magic, okay? Think about magic tricks and illusions, okay? Um, if you Google optical illusions, um, 
a lot of times these are things that really play on your visual biases, the things that that you are prone or inclined to see upon first glance. So what appears may not necessarily be what is actually happening or what appears to us or what we perceive may not necessarily be real. So remember, the definition of truth, the reality that lies at the basis of an appearance. So in order for us to understand what truth is, we have to actually be familiar with the source of that reality. Okay? So when you're looking at a magician perform a magic trick, it appears that they're pulling a rabbit out of the hat when there was nothing in the hat previously. So that's what we perceive, okay? It's the illusion of what we're looking at. However, when the magician, if he chooses or if she chooses to share the actual truth or the reality behind the trick, you will find that what you were seeing or what you were perceiving is not necessarily what was really happening in reality. There was sleight of hand, there was uh, visual uh, distractions while the trick was going on that made you think you were seeing something that wasn't really there. So truth is the reality of what is actually happening, okay? It doesn't necessarily matter what appears because what appears isn't necessarily the reality happening at the basis of that appearance. So how do we get to truth? We must first go to the source of the reality. Jesus said himself, okay, in John 14, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So if Jesus is the truth, in essence, he was saying, I am the reality of all things. Okay? I'm the reality of all things. I am the actual basis that lies behind everything you see. Many times because of what we experience in our background, in our lives, our perceptions are perverted. Okay? Um, that's where biases come from because we're pretty much limited to the scope of what we have already experienced. Uh, that's the reason why it's so difficult to break out of a comfort zone because comfort zones are formed by historical experiences. It's what we're used to happening. It's what we're used to experiencing. Okay, And anything that is new, anything that is different, it challenges our historical perspective of what has always been. Okay? So we have to really be careful when it comes to interpreting truth because it can be detrimental, okay, uh, if we're not properly attuned and aligned with Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, okay? So he is the source of all things. He is the source of reality. Now, theologically, I can get into... Uh, what is reality? Um, what is truth? According to all of the various worldviews that exist out there. But I'm not going to do that because this is not the scope of this 30-day inspiration challenge. Uh, but what I will say is, if at any point we do not choose to yield our lives to truth, and if at any point we are not willing to submit to truth, no matter how uncomfortable it is, then 
we risk walking in deception. We risk being deceived, right? Um, so here's what I want to leave with you. Truth d does not change. Truth does not shift based on our desire to live it. Okay, what do I mean by that? Just because we don't necessarily want to hear the truth or just because we don't want to face the truth or live the truth, it does not change the fact that truth is truth. <laughs> truth doesn't change because we don't believe it. It doesn't change because we don't want to live it or we refuse to face it. Truth will always be truth in its essence. So we have to be careful how we deal with truth. When it comes to the word of God, and when it comes to righteousness, and when it comes to living in purpose, we have to be true to the reality that lies behind the basis of what we see. And we have to come to terms with our ability and our willingness to walk in that truth, okay? So I cannot expect truth to conform to my will or my desire, okay? If it doesn't matter how badly I want something to be true or not true, okay? If I am not willing to know the truth, then the truth will never have the intended effect on my life. That is liberty and freedom. Okay? So, even though the Bible and the Word of God contain some very hard, difficult truths, I have to take one of two positions as it relates to truth. I have to, number one, say, you know what? I'm going to humble myself under the hand of God, and I'm going to say, Father, I realize that the truth in your word, okay, may not always be easy for me to perform. The truth in your word may not always be easy for me to understand. And the truth in your word may not even be what I want. But I still acknowledge that it is truth. And everything in me that does not want to align with truth is because of the sin that is in my nature. I'm not expecting your truth to change. Because I understand that truth never changes. Okay? The world has always been round. That's the truth of the matter. Back in the day, we believed that the world, the earth was flat. All right? The earth has never been flat. <laughs> but until we actually faced that truth... We were never liberated in our minds, okay, to do space travel and to orbit the earth and to do all of these amazing things that we're doing now because we did not know the truth, which was and is the earth is round, it's a sphere the same way it's one of the issues that I have with science right science is trying to catch up with truth <laughs> right I mean truth it, it just is but science is trying to catch up with truth by establishing certain proofs the problem that I have with science is that science says 
it isn't true until we can prove it. And that's not truth. <laughs> truth exists before science comes along to prove it. Science simply verifies truth. All right? So that's the first position that we take. The second position we can take is just simply rebelling against the truth that we realize or come to discover. So once you discover truth, you're responsible for what you do with that truth. Okay? So I encourage you, dig for the truth, search for the truth. And you may find that the reality that lies at the basis of that appearance may not necessarily be what you've seen. Look again, because the truth will make you free. All right, my friends, until next time, have an amazing evening. I will see you tomorrow. Be bold, be yourself, and be unleashed. Blessings.